Pittsburgh Steelers at the Los Angeles Rams. Rams favored by three against the Steelers. A little 405, a little fun little matchup here at 405. The Steelers. Right, again, let me read Matthew Stafford's stats because I was shocked at this. He's leading the league in big time throws. Yeah, this makes no sense whatsoever. What are Stafford's By four, action? by the way. He's four clear of anybody else. Tua, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen is two behind that. But Stafford has four more big time throws than anybody else in the this NFL. Is, this is insane. So he's got an 84.5 PFF grade. That is uh, sixth in the league, Stafford. Mm -hmm. But he has a passer rating of 83.5, which ranks probably 18th or 20th or whatever it might be. Let's see. 23rd in passer rating. Yikes. Only six touchdowns. I threw a beautiful pass to Puka the other day, remember? Mm -hmm. Puka dropped it, so that didn't count as a touchdown because he dropped it. Only six touchdowns and five picks for Stafford. And as you mentioned, 18 big-time throws to lead the league, 7.6% big-time throw percentage. Also highest in the league. Which is probably, yeah, almost uh, one percentage higher than anyone else in the league. Stafford's balling out. But it's just all he's had is Puka for most of the year and now Puka and Cup, and it's just it's not showing up in the stats. I honestly didn't realize his stats were that bad relative to the rest of the league. Yeah, I just assumed that he had a bunch of year. touchdowns. <laughs> it turns out he doesn't. Yeah, crazy. So what else you got on this game? Second in the league for a big-time throw rate, by the way, being Tua, as opposed to his, you know, every throw is two yards, Stephen A. Smith. you saying Tua is second in something? Yeah. Get ready. They're coming after you. Two and on. Two and on is going to jump on that. I tried to brave the waters Can't the other day, Can't and I it. just said, I just typed in Tua Tunga Vailoa. Discuss. <sighs> and just let the people discuss. I just muted most of Miami over the course of those two days where they were hating on Justin Herbert randomly. I was we like, need to do a history a of who you muted year over year. So 2018. I did was, that for a while. I was yeah. remember I, I kept But it was tracker. like one per year of which fan base did we piss off the most? Yeah. 2018 was the Bears. But I kept like a tracker of fan bases that I pissed off over Let's a season. See. Let's stay focused. The Steelers is an annual thing, but the Steelers in 2020 when they were 11 and 0 and we were like this is the worst 11 0 team in history. <laughs> this is the worst 7 and 4 team in history and they're 11 and 0 and then they lost their next 5. Anyway, it's the Steelers. They're 3 and 2. You can't figure out how they've even gotten there, but they do, you know, TJ Watt closes games down, mm -hmm. and we've broken down the Rams' pass blocking. They've had two or three games in the 20s from a pass blocking standpoint. If TJ Watt and company can get the Rams' pass blocking to, you know, grade in the 20s again, yeah. that's how you beat the Rams. TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith teeing off on those Rams' offensive tackles is a pretty big mismatch in their favor. Um, you know, Watt, obviously, we've talked about him a lot. He's extremely good. He's uh, especially good at those kind of closing plays, the impact plays, sacks, force fumbles. Um, he said, I think, recently that he would rather have, like, one sack than, I forget what the number was, but, like, a ton of pressures. He's like, I'd rather have the one sack. And he plays like that. Like, he wants the finishing play. He wants to end the, the play and the game when he can. But then the other side, like, Alex Highsmith has developed into this really good elite pass rusher in his own right. He's got that really nice combination. Like, he's not Dwight Freeney, right? But he has the same combination of, remember, Freeney would be really good around the edge for speed with that kind of ghost move. And then just when you're starting to overset to deal with that, he would hit you with that inside spin that was unstoppable. His spin was so good. I yeah. mean, Freeney's, of course, but Highsmith has had a good spin since college. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Highsmith is now, that's his two moves, right? He's got this really nice ghost move for speed around the edge and then as soon as you start thinking about that and oversetting for it he's going to hit you with that spin which is one of the best spins in the nfl and that's his that's his two you know combination counter um and he has like he's only got four fewer pressures than tj watt on the season with 19 fewer pass rushes even if he's only got the two sacks and both those sacks by the way have been strip sack forced fumbles yeah. like he's got that tj watt end and he of it hit it right to tj watt right the tj watt end of it of if he's going to make a play it's going to be a big one so those two going up against that rams offensive line should be potentially game changing the whole sack versus pressure thing is a it's a whole different conversation or whatever but there's a difference between what you like the result and then doing like how you get to the result. Yeah, we don't have time for that now. We don't, don't even don't even do it. You're right. Thank you for cutting that off. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Pickett 
has a similar stat line as Matthew Stafford. Not, I mean, it's not as good, but he's only got four big time throws. But he's clutch, right? He's clutch. Yeah. Oh man, Pickett's not playing that great. The Matt nope. Canada question. I mean, the, I think Pittsburgh just needs all their playmakers to step up, right? They need Darnell Washington to step up. They need people to step up from a playmaking <laughs> yeah. standpoint. The problem with their offense is it actually requires the players within it to overcome the scheme. Like, the scheme isn't going to get it done. In fact, the scheme is kind of dragging you down. Now you need a playmaker to just go nuts and make an independent play outside of whatever is happening and just take over. And that's a really difficult thing to ask on a weekly basis in the NFL. Um, Deontay Johnson was a full participant in practice. He's been on injured reserve. Could I mean, he's been good. He's a good player at receiver for, for the Steelers. He's a good possession type receiver 10 yards per catch type of guy couldn't find the end zone last year at a historic rate but it looks like he might be back and that adds again it just it just solidifies roles a little bit more he can be your possession guy george pickens you still have to last time we saw the steelers they were chucking it down the field to him and he was making plays for the first time all year so the potential is there um, but the steelers haven't put together a full game offensively they've had spurts offensively uh, they need to figure it out though mm-hmm um, one of the best rookies this year has been Byron Young for the Rams. I think he's just such a perfect match with Aaron Donald. He's got that. Remember when Dante Fowler had a huge year because yep. he's just he's the perfect player to sort of get all those cleanup pressures from Aaron Donald. Donald is back to basically being Aaron Donald, a 90-plus pass rushing grade, 30 pressures this season. Byron Young is 25. Um and a lot of those are like cleanup plays where he's just he's got that so fast he's so dispersed. twitchy explosive through the roof can close on a quarterback if he's got space and he's got a high motor as well like he he wants it so he's going to chase those plays where Donald creates havoc and the two of them in combo I think are a really nice connection oh man I'm torn on this one here Rams by three I'm going to go Pittsburgh because that edge rushing duo just feels like good enough to completely wreck the Rams offense yeah. I'm going to take LA because now that I've discovered Matthew Stafford's stats there's yeah. no way they could stay that bad 